or millennia, the horse and its carriage dominated transport. Yet, by the end of the mere two-decade run of the Model T, buying an automobile was not just a possibility, but a necessity in life. In the early 1900s, after numerous previous attempts, Henry Ford and his design team began the production of the Ford Model T at the Highland Park plant in Michigan. Widely regarded as the first affordable automobile, it used new design and manufacturing ideas. Such ideas led to a simple and capable car, surpassing 15 million sales and costing what would today be four and a half thousand dollars. This success, however, was not a coincidence. Rather, a combination of many factors, including a reputation built up from previous models, a vast system of dealerships, and most of all, a simple design and a revolutionary production line. Such capabilities led the Ford Model T to cross the frontier in automobile production and sales. On October 1st, 1908, the first Model T rolled off the production line, but cars had already been around for many years. In fact, the first automobile came to the news in 1885 with Carl Benz's patent motor car. Cars became more common after that, with models such as the Mercedes 35 and the Rolls-Royce Silver Ghost, among others. Even though they were for sale, however, the average middle-class American was unable to buy them. This was due to the cost, which only the richest of people could afford, and the car's inability to be mass-produced. This led to the common man not using a car, and in rural areas, even seeing one was unusual in the late 1800s, with their presence attracting attention and scaring horses. These disruptions led to some people complaining about their presence in the road and accidents. For all the complaints, however, cars were gaining popularity and the technology could not be stopped. Henry Ford began designing automobiles in 1893 and after three years of work, he created the Quadricycle in 1896. The second automobile was made with an intention to market it. However, a combination of low quality and high price led to the failure and disbanding of the first company. On a second attempt, the Henry Ford Company, which would later be Cadillac, with Ford as chief engineer, was founded, but a disagreement with the stockholders led him to leaving. On his third attempt, he secured funding from his friend and coal dealer, Alexander Malcolmson, and a bit later, the Dodd Brothers. Ford, along with racing cyclist Tom Cooper, pursued Ford's longtime interest and created the 999, a racing car and with Barney Oldfield racing it after the initial races that Ford drove himself, the car was a great success, and the Ford Motor Company became known across the country. Ford also created a new series of cars, beginning with the Model A in 1903, which was built in the small Mack Avenue plant in Detroit, the Model B in 1904, which moved production to the more modern and significantly larger Piquette Avenue plant to keep up with demand to expand the company, the Model C, which took the Model A, revised it, and gave it a more powerful engine. The models F and K, which were aimed at a richer market, and the Model N, which produced nearly 7,000 units. All these models were aimed at the middle class, and all sought to make the car so affordable that the average American could buy it and use it for the daily activities. This was finally achieved with the Model N's replacement, the Frontier Crossing Model T. One of the main reasons behind the success of Model T was its simple, yet capable of design. Simplifying it not only reduced the parts required and the cost of the car, but also made the car more customizable, attracting people from all fields. Some examples of the simplicity were the gas tanks, which fed the engine using gravity, the lubrication, the transmission, the color, famously only being mass produced in black, and the user interface, which was made easy to drive for the time and driver oriented. Many new ideas were used to make it so capable, Vanadium steel was one such discovery. While not made by Ford, he was the first to use it for an industrial application. It was a lightweight, strong, and powerful alloy, and using it reduced the weight of the car, making it only 1,200 pounds, giving it a huge advantage over its competitors, and further boosting the already capable engine, which was also an innovation, with 20 horsepower and four cylinders. Horst Sage stated, None of the specific advantages of block construction are sacrificed by this method of construction. Arguably, the biggest reason the Model T was able to cross the frontier was not the simple design, but its revolutionary production line where the majority of the Model Ts were assembled. Ford began in the Mack Avenue plant in April 1903, and after just one year, moved out in October 1904 
to go to the Piquette Avenue plant at Milwaukee Junction in Detroit, which built the first Model T's along with Ford's previous models, which it used till 1910. Ford moved to the Highland Park plant in Michigan and moved the production of the Model T there. Significantly larger and more capable at mass production than its previous plants, the Highland Park plant was 120 acres in size and employed 66,000 workers, 53,000 of which worked on the production line. In addition to the moving assembly line, the plant included a hospital, an educational department, moving pictures department, and many more. The assembly line used much more effective cost-cutting measures, division of labor, and optimization. Such measures were effective but harsh on workers, leading to the turnout increasing, which was solved by a $5 day, much higher than the competition. After altering the variables for a few years, the implemented measures slashed the price of the car, leading it to cost just $260 in 1925, and have a car roll off the production line every 93 minutes. Despite its competition being heavily advertised, the Ford Model T did not pay to do so on a large scale. This was due to Henry Ford believing that paid advertisements were a waste of money and saying, if you have a really good thing, it will advertise itself. Its main advertisements came through its popularity and its using of the Ford name, which was well known through its previous models and success with the 999. Despite that, the nearly 10,000 dealerships across the country spent an overall average of $3 million or $51 million today, a year using advertisements and photos given by the company to advertise in their local area. Such advertisements included illustrations backed by text, brochures, and even colored pictures to put on newspapers, and they targeted everybody, farmers, rich men, and women alike, living up to the slogan, the universal car. Ford even had his son, Edsel Ford, lead the advertising department as Model T shares began to decline from its peak of selling half of all cars in 1920 due to increasing competition. Despite its huge success, by 1927, the Ford Model T was done. It had been built on an idea that everybody could buy a car for a low price, but by 1927, the car was obsolete, based on a design made nearly two decades previously. Furthermore, this was the Roaring Twenties, a time where people wanted to move on from the First World War, to enjoy life, to have luxuries, and to express themselves. The Ford Model T, a simple, cheap car for everybody, from the 1910s and had made such a wish possible, but did not give the customers the luxury they wanted. Most company executives, including Edsel Ford, realized this, and some, like Ernest Cancel, attempted to convince Henry Ford to make a new model. After much resistance and Ernest Cancel's removal, Henry Ford finally allowed the Model T to be replaced after the 15th million model had been made. The Model T had crossed the frontier, but it was not designed to keep up with the new age it had began. It was replaced by the Ford Model A. Rather than naming it the Model U, as the convention had in the past, Ford called it the Model A, symbolizing a reset and a new beginning. The Model A was a new design, not containing any parts from the Model T. It was more luxurious, beautifully stylized in Edsel Ford's style, and capable of reaching up to 65 miles per hour, and contained many safety features such as safety windshields and hydraulic shocks, all while keeping the cost low. It was a huge success with 10 million people viewing it in the first week, and demand for it so large that the new Ford Rouge plant in Dearborn was not able to keep up with the demand till 1929. The Model T left a huge impact on the world. The number of sales was the most direct and immediate impact of it, from a mere 8,000 car sales a year at the beginning of the century, and 140,000 a year before the Model T began production, 20 million cars were sold in 1927. With the success of the Model T, Competition also grew, and other car manufacturers such as General Motors and Chrysler also began using Ford strategies such as Ford's assembly line and vanadium steel. With cars widely available, travelling farther distances became much easier, leading to people moving to the suburbs and expanding cities. New roads were required, resulting in the Federal Road Aid Act of 1916, and by the 1950s, when 90% of households owned the car, the Highway Act of 1956 created the interstate highways. Such an increase in transportation resulted in a new system of roads being built, along with drive-in stores and fast food restaurants. Yet this decreased the reliance on public transport and increased pollution. The mass production also reduced the quality of working conditions, and the increasingly harsh working conditions led to many complaints, and were not reaching Ford till after the Model T ended the formation and usage of unions. Overall, the Ford Model T revolutionized travel, and made the faraway dream of the automobile industry a reality.